church, my mission, and as I looked at the sub-theme that was earmarked for today, in spirit, prepared for service. When a Jamaican hears the term in spirit, he thinks of being inubirated or intoxicated. You know, the pastor was traveling down the road when the police pulled him over uh, because he was swerving from side to side. When the officer uh, uh, walked up to the window when he wound it down, he saw a bottle with a clear substance next to the driver on the passenger seat. Uh, the officer said, it is evident, sir, that you have been uh, driving, drinking, and driving. I'm going to charge you for a DUI drink, uh, driving under the influence. Uh, the man said, officer, I'm a pastor. I, I will never do that. And the substance in the bottle is water. The officer said to him, let me smell it. And when the officer took a smell, he recognized that it was white rum and water. When he reprimanded the pastor for lying to him, the pastor lifted his hands to heaven and said, God, you have done it again. You have turned water into wine. But today, we have come because we are in spirit and prepared for service. And as I get into the word that God has laid on my heart to lay on your hearts, uh, pray for me and bow your heads with me right now as I pray. Everlasting Father and Lord God, this earthen vessel, container, stands before you as just an instrument. I pray through your power and spirit that you will now fill me with the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is your image, that the excellence of the glory may be of you and not of me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let me acknowledge my Digital Disciples for Christ Online, the DDCs, who are doing well to ensure that they engage those folks in their networks that by chance they might just come in touch with what's happening here today because the Bible declares that faith then comes by hearing and hearing by the what? The word of God. It's a mystery. You hear a word, you understand the word, you believe the word, you receive the word, you act upon the word, and God brings about transformation in your life. Uh, historically, there seems to have been a concerted effort by some to portray Jesus Christ and other prominent Bible characters, Dr. White, as older folk. This philosophy has created a culture of young people being viewed merely as the future of the church, with their full potential limited, Dr. Brown, by their youth. They are perceived as being in preparation for full functionality when somebody is either too tired, too old, or too dead to function anymore. But it has never been God's intention for the old to see the potential of the youth as pending, nor the youth, the old, as their challenge. Both have their part to play concurrently. A Sitzim Leben or historical analysis of God's operation will reveal that Adam was born big, but everyone else has had to grow up. Uh, there, thus, youth have always been a very important part of God's mission, especially when he sets out to disrupt the status quo and to advance his mission exponentially. So that you might find substance in my utterances, Joseph was only 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh as prime minister of Egypt. Do I have a testament here? To fulfill a mission that God had revealed to him from he was as young as 17. And from his initial anointing to his appointing, which Joseph was earmarked to carry out a special work. He was a part of the youth department. God picked him right out of the cornerstone class. David was 30 when he reigned as king, yet he was around 15 years old thereabout when Samuel first anointed him. God 
picked him right out of the pathfinder club. Daniel was about 17 years old when he stood before King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon and what a powerhouse he was. God took him straight out of the youth department. Are you following the preacher this afternoon? Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were naturally younger teens based on most traditional assumptions and that Daniel was the natural leader of the group because he was much older meaning that they might have been two or three years younger than him God took them right out of early teens Pastor Williams I take it a bit further the prophet Jeremiah was believed to be about 20 years old when God called him to be a prophet besides the fact that even before he was formed in his mother's womb God had earmarked him for a mission I take it yet another step further as I move from Old Testament to the New Testament era based on most historical assessments uh, that the 12 disciples were between the ages of 15 and 25 when Jesus called them with Peter potentially being the eldest of the group being the only married one according to what's presented in scripture and based on his verbosity and his dominance in leadership thus both in the synoptic gospels Matthew Mark and Luke and the gospel of John Jesus often refers to them as my little children and this brings a whole lot of perspective to the table which I'll get back to in the course of of my message, Jesus took these transformative leaders, uh, transform transformational leaders rather, right out uh, of the youth department. Uh, but if you believe that these uh, were prolific, uh, consider a certain part finder, Pastor Fletcher, who at the age of 12 uh, was in the temple reasoning with the Dr. Walker and the lawyer Oliphant, uh, and they were astounded by the profundity of his expandation of the scriptures. Uh, then years later on, uh, he was invested as a master guide uh, at age 27, still a part uh, of the youth department. We haven't gotten to 30 as yet, uh, and it's just recently we dropped it from 35. Uh, and so, my brothers and sisters, if you are wondering who he is, uh, I want to let you know that he was all in, uh, for he concluded, this is my church uh, and my mission. Uh, uh, his name was uh, Jesus, uh, and he's still Jesus. And when this young man arose from the waters of the Jordan, when he was baptized by John the Baptist, the following Sabbath, he showed up in church and declared to the leaders and the masses, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. How do you know? Because he has what? Anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me, Pastor Paul, who preached and baptized me to the to, 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 to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach, somebody say preach, the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. I'm going to do that at the end of my sermon. And he closed the book and gave it to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them, Elder Porteous, that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. It was ineradicably evident that he was in spirit prepared for service. Fasten your eyes on someone next to you. Come on, fasten your eyes on someone next to you and say, I'm under the influence. Fasten them on somebody else. Come on, fasten them on somebody else and say, I'm under the influence. Just to shake off a little arthritis and pending niggeritis, jump to your feet for a quick moment and shout, I'm under the influence. I speak to you today on the caption, I'm under the influence. As we navigate the intricate tapestry of life, Pastor Castell, it becomes evident that we are constantly under the sway of various uh, influences. Whether it is uh, the relentless tide uh, of social media, the 
subtle whispers uh, of societal norms, uh, the captivating charms of celebrities, uh, or the powerful currents uh, of personal relationships, uh, the world around us exerts uh, a, a profound impact on our thoughts and actions. Uh, uh, these ever-pressing cacophony of stimuli uh, st necessitate three things. One, we must know who we are. Two, we must know whose we are. And three, we must know why we are. Who we are, who we are speaks of our identity. What we identify with creates an image of our true branding. Knowing who we are is a fundamental aspect of self-awareness and personal development. This concept encompasses a deep understanding of our identity. Identity, somebody say identity, values, beliefs, uh, and overall sense uh, of self. Uh, the importance of knowing who we are extends across various aspects uh, of our lives uh, and has significant implications uh, for our well-being, relationships, uh, and overall purpose in life, Dr. Buddha Fletcher. That is why many of the most powerful countries uh, of our world uh, are suffering exponential societal atrocities uh, because their young people are having an identity crisis. Uh, as I fill out forms online, uh, they are no longer male or female. Uh, all sorts of letters of the alphabet. Uh, and by the time they are through with A to Z, I guess they are going to move to one, two, three. Uh, who we are is important. Uh, then we talk about whose we are but the word of God leaves us in no doubt as to our origin for Genesis 1 26 declares that God made man in his own image and if you doubt what I just said look at the person next to you and you will conclude that monkey could not have done that we were made by intelligent and divine design somebody bless the name of Jesus now that I can imagine sister Carnage my origination it, it tells me where I ought to draw my inspiration when you talk about identical twins it is because they, they, they look like each other or in plain Jamaican parlance you favor one another when you look like your father and act like your father they say cheap no far far from black or if you're more American the apple doesn't fall far from the tree so when you know your identification you instantly understand your classification so instantly I know who I am and whose I am I was created by God so I am private property trespassers will be prosecuted I am not going off course that is why I am concerned pastor jump when a good Christian man decides to take up a woman who has not yet taken up his God or a good Christian girl decides to take up a man who has not yet taken up her God. It makes me question your spirituality and your integrity because God is such a fine gentleman that he will never give you somebody who does not belong to him. I will say amen for the church all by myself. Amen! Before you take him up, make sure God has taken him down because if he's too high, God is going to bring him low. Get back here as I set the foundation for the word of God today. I'm going somewhere with all of this. So we're talking about whose we are. However, sin has sought to destroy the image of God in, uh, in man, Sister Walker, leading to pain, suffering, and confusion. Because when you have an identity crisis, you are drawing inspiration and taking ownership over your life from all angles like your are and Jackson Miller. This manifestation of vices has plunged humanity and our young people into a conundrum that leads to death. But through the merits of Jesus, somebody praise the Lord, God has redeemed us back to himself. Once again then, my identity is intact. 
that. Uh, for John 1 12 announces, uh, but as many as receive him, uh, to them gave he what, Sister Ruth, and the power to become the children of God, uh, even to those who what, uh, believe on his name. I know who God says I am, uh, what he says uh, I am, uh, where he says uh, I matter. I know who I am. I belong to him. Uh, and now we move on to why uh, we are. Uh, now that I know who I am and whose I am, uh, it is important to recognize uh, why I exist. It is my sense of purpose and direction, uh, the objectivity of my liberty. Uh, knowing who we are is a fundamental aspect. Uh, um, uh, knowing who we are is a fundamental aspect uh, of self-awareness, uh, personal development, uh, and the pursuit uh, of purpose. Uh, understanding why we are is significant. Uh, it, 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 for it provides a spiritual foundation uh, and a sense of direction uh, and a framework uh, and a frame of reference uh, for navigating this life. Are we together? It empowers me to live out my faith uh, according to the authenticity not of my own self uh, but of the word of God uh, and make a positive impact uh, of the world around me by engaging in God's mission to save souls. Uh, for as Ephesians 2 verse 10 admits, uh, for we are his workmanship. Somebody say workmanship. Uh, created in Christ Jesus uh, for unto good works uh, which God had before ordained uh, that we, somebody shout we, should walk in them. Now then in validating that I am his prized possession, God gives me his spirit. I'm getting closer to theme. Uh, Nicodemus tried to water it down, uh, but Jesus admonished him uh, in John 3, 5 to 8, except a man be born uh, of water and of the what? The spirit. Uh, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Uh, you will contrast it with the previous verses. Uh, in verse 3 initially, Jesus had said to him, uh, except a man is born again, uh, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, but when Nicodemus acted as if he was smart mouth uh, and wanted to get cute, uh, Jesus broke it down uh, and said, uh, listen to me, uh, except you are born of water and of the spirit, uh, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Uh, in verse 3, uh, it is connected to verse 5. Uh, in the first instance, the verb is to see, uh, but in the second one, it is to enter. Has Jesus forgotten what he just said to Nicodemus? No. He was being practical and logical. Uh, except you are born again, uh, you cannot see the kingdom, much less to enter into the kingdom. Uh, if you try to make it into heaven, uh, you are going to buck your toe. Uh, but when you have the spirit of God, uh, when you are born of water and the spirit uh, you have spiritual eyesight uh, because the natural man uh, cannot appreciate the things of God uh, for they are foolishness unto him uh, but spiritual things where are my morning watch people are spiritually what discerned uh, so when you are born of the spirit uh, it means that your ownership has been ratified uh, and thus you belong to God uh, so Jesus says to Nicodemus you will know that you are in spirit uh, and prepared for service uh, when you are full of the spirit. Why is that so? Because when you have the spirit uh, the wind blows where it wishes uh, and you hear the sound of it uh, but you cannot tell where it is coming from uh, and you cannot tell where it is going. Uh, so somebody says so is everyone who is born of the spirit. Uh, Jesus, Jesus later described uh, the Holy Spirit uh, in John 14 verse 17. Uh, Even the spirit uh, of truth uh, whom the world cannot receive uh, because it seeth him not uh, neither knoweth him uh, but he know him uh, for he dwelleth in you and shall be with you. Paul uh, later adds in Romans 8 verse 9 uh, but he are not in the flesh. But in the what? Spirit of God. If so, the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man hath not the spirit of Christ, uh, he is none of his. Uh, so the Holy Spirit uh, uh, validates me, Pastor uh, um, Melvin, uh, and demonstrates through the outworking uh, of his divine power in my life uh, that is no longer about what I possess, uh, but who possesses me. Uh, I am God's property. Uh, I was bought at a price. Uh, he never procured my soul uh, on a layaway place. 
plan. He didn't buy me on a higher purchase. He paid for me in full and he has the receipt of his precious blood to prove it. And since he paid the price that I could never pay, he paid the debt at Calvary. He cleansed my soul and set me free. I'm glad that Jesus all my sins erase and now can sing a brand new song. Amazing grace. So I'm all in. This is my church and my mission. I'm not an imposter. I'm not an intruder. Jesus Christ has brought me back to the kingdom and I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm a child of God. So being a bond servant, I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord. I'll do what you want me to do and I'll say what you want me to say. Somebody praise the Lord. I'm all in in spirit and prepared for service for I am under the influence. But what is the spirit influencing me to do? One might ask. Ask one unflinchingly answers the question. But he shall receive power. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoa. And this power doesn't come from shower and labor. And power. This power doesn't come from JPS because it will cut off. But he shall receive power. Somebody say power. After the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And he shall be my witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. Shout Jerusalem. And in all Judea. Shout Judea. And in Samaria. Say Samaria. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. When the church is not evangelistically focused. It is because they are not in spirit. So they are not prepared for service. Because until God has gotten in you. He cannot get you to be all in. You never heard what I just said. I said until God has gotten in you, he cannot get you to be all in. Now I get to the preaching portion. And at this point, Sister Joel, you become excited because he finally has gotten to his text. Joel 2 verses 28 and going down. He says, and it shall come to pass uh, till after that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Somebody say all flesh your sons and your daughters uh, Jesus Christ you are disrupting the status quo why did you, you leave out the leadership and went straight to the children your sons and your daughters uh, don't feel bad old men and women uh, you are still somebody's children somebody praise the Lord uh, your sons uh, and your daughters uh, will prophesy uh, your old men uh, shall dream dreams uh, but hallelujah uh, your young men shall see visions uh, and when this time comes uh, the Bible Bible says uh, that big things are going to happen in the East Jamaica conference uh, for it shall come to pass uh, that whosoever call uh, upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Now in Joel 1, the prophet spoke uh, of the judgment that had already come upon Judah. But in chapter 2, he begins by describing uh, the judgment that will come. Uh, a mighty army set against Judah. Now understand that in Bible prophecy we have both the literal and the typological and thus things were spoken that though fulfilled in their immediate context also bore meaning according to God's omniscience for things Pastor Michael that were yet to happen in the future am I still with the church and so what we find as a practice in eschatological prophecies is a pattern of repeat and expand so there is repetition and expansion of the same concept so in chapter Chapter 1, he spoke about the Lord's day, which is the day of the Lord's visitation or the day of the Lord's judgment. In chapter 2, he reiterates it, but you can see from the context that he spoke not only of the immediate context, but of the final judgment that is to come upon the world. So here we find a popular motif in the Old Testament prophecies. It's called the day of the Lord, and it is a classic term to describe the day when God will
will come to take account of his children. So for example, in Revelation 1 verse 10, many will argue that when John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, that was Sabbath. And some will misconstrue it to say it was Sunday. But that wasn't really the argument because the Lord's day is the same as the day of the Lord. And the Lord's day is also the seventh day Sabbath. What John was saying though is that I was brought in spirit uh, to the day of the Lord uh, so that I can see the things uh, that are going to happen uh, in this judgment hour. But thank God, uh, God never just pronounced judgment. Uh, he pronounced a season of restoration. Uh, because for those who are in him, uh, judgment is good news. Come on, somebody. Uh, you don't have to worry uh, because you are no longer under law. Uh, you are obedient to it uh, because you are under the grace and when you are under grace you have the spirit and how do you know when you have the spirit the bible says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into what all truth so you can't keep the sabbath if you don't have the spirit and isn't it ironic that some will tell you that seven day adventists don't have any spirit but they are still breaking god's commandment it is because i'm full of spirit why i prepare every weekend to come into the house of the Lord to magnify his name and when I come, I come with a grin on my face because sometimes when God has brought you through a rough week, you sit in church with your face looking long like God has done you something wrong but I'm so glad to know I don't depend on pastor to get my praise on I don't depend on the sweet mass choir to get my praise on for all that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. I'm the fairest of 10,000 in my blessed Lord. I see when you come to church, you must come with praise. The psalmist says, I might not, I might come in my stilettos. I might come in my cheap suit. I might come in my nice Chanel and Aldebar. I may come nice in my Valentino and sent by Issa. Me York here. I may come with my Ati Ati hairstyle, uh, my Kanikalan, uh, my premium Yaki, uh, my Remy Yaki, uh, my Brazilian Frontal, uh, my Malaysian, uh, or my Peruvian. Uh, but that's not the most important thing uh, that I come with. Uh, I will enter uh, his course uh, with thanksgiving uh, in my heart uh, and I will enter. His courts with praise. Ha. I feel like preaching. I feel like preaching. It shall come to pass afterwards. Somebody say afterwards. After the restoration Joel spoke of previously in the chapter, there will come a time of ultimate restoration and blessing. This latter time will be marked by an outpouring of God's spirit upon all flesh. Somebody say all flesh. And this is significant. Not just selected men at selected times for selected duties. I, I need to repeat that. Somebody said, touch and come again. If it were radio, you would say, if it is nice, then play it twice. Not just for selected men. At selected times. For selected duties. Because some act as if God needs to line up behind them in order to pour out the spirit. Lord have mercy. And that is why the disciples discombobulated the status quo. Because they were ready to slap them in the face like the Old Testament prophet. And ask, when did the spirit of God move from me to you? But when God is getting ready to move, he doesn't need your permission. You are his property and he decides where you place. Come on somebody. So the Bible said the Old Testament has beautifully chronicled the work of the spirit of God, Dr. Walker. But he was not poured out on all flesh under the Old Covenant. Instead, certain men were filled with the spirit at certain times and only for certain duties. It was rather selective. For example, Pastor Beckford, David says he was in the spirit at one point. Jephthah was filled with the spirit of God. Samson was filled with the 
the Spirit of God. Joshua was filled with the Spirit of God. Saul uh, was filled with the Spirit of God. Uh, Joseph and Gideon and others uh, were all filled uh, with the Spirit of God. And the list goes on. Uh, but he was not poured out upon all flesh. So here, Joel, look forward to uh, the glorious new covenant uh, when the Spirit of God uh, would be poured out on all flesh. Uh, do you hear a certain word in the theme coming through, everybody? Somebody say, oh, uh, on all flesh. Uh, why? Even your sons uh, and your daughters, uh, your old men uh, and your young men uh, would be filled with the Spirit of God. Uh, this was first fulfilled uh, on the day of Pentecost uh, when the disciples were gathered uh, in the upper room waiting uh, in Jerusalem for the outpouring uh, of the Holy Spirit uh, that Jesus promised would come. Uh, when the outpouring of the Spirit came, uh, the 120 followers uh, of Jesus were all filled uh, with the Spirit and began to praise God uh, in other tongues. Uh, Jerusalem uh, was crowded at the time uh, because of the feast uh, of Pentecost. Uh, so quickly they gathered because of the commotion. Uh, those who heard the disciples uh, praise God in these miraculous languages uh, began to mock them uh, claiming that they were drunk uh, because it was clear uh, that they were in spirit uh, and prepared for service. Uh, it's just that they never recognized uh, that the spirit that they had uh, it was not produced on Appleton Estate. Uh, you can't buy it from J. Ray and Nephew. You can't get it from J.B. Rum. Uh, but it is the spirit uh, of God. So Peter stood up uh, and boldly set the record straight. Uh, the disciples were not drunk at all. Uh, but this was a fulfillment. Uh, Peter told them in Acts 2, uh, 16 to 21 uh, of the prophecy of Joel uh, that God uh, will pour out his spirit uh, upon all flesh. I'm punching it now. At first, uh, one commentator says, uh, any Jew who would have scoffed at the idea of 120 followers uh, of a crucified man uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Based on their understanding in, of the Old Testament, they would think uh, these 120 people are not kings or prophets or priests. I want to move so strong. Hello, somebody. God only um, pours out his spirit on special people for special duties. These are common folk and God doesn't pour out his spirit on them. But Peter uses the prophecy of Joel to show them that things are different now. Turn to somebody next to you and say things are different now. Come on, you have to say it with some conviction. Things are different now. Shout it somebody. Things are different now. The Holy Spirit is poured out upon all who believe and receive Jesus. Even the common folk uh, and the young people in the church. Uh, now God uh, has offered a new covenant relationship uh, and a part of that new covenant relationship uh, is the outpouring of the spirit uh, upon all flesh. Somebody say hallelujah. So in Joel 2, 23, 24 uh, he says that God uh, was going to send the former rain uh, as well as the latter rain uh, but he wasn't talking about the literal rain uh, that they wanted for the crop. Uh, he was talking about the rain of the Holy Spirit uh, to build up the church. Somebody said build up the church. So Ellen White in Last Day Events, page 208 says, the great work of the gospel is not to close with less manifestation of the power of God that marked its opening. The prophecies which were fulfilled in the outpouring of the former reign at the opening of the gospel, that is Pentecost, the apostolic church, are again to be fulfilled in the latter reign for it's closer. That is the end of the quote. So God is getting ready for a Pentecost that is more Pentecostal than the one that took place 2,000 years ago. And when we will have experienced it, we're going to recognize, if you may, that this one is Pentecost test because it is the superlative. Why? Because it's not going to be selected men. But God is going to pour out his spirit on pathfinders. Pour out the spirit and senior youth, pour out the spirit, and master guys, pour out the spirit, and 
and conference administrators, pour out the spirit on departmental directors, pour out the spirit upon the pastors, every nook and cranny, from baby to granny, the good, the bad, and the ugly, except the spirit of God is going to be poured out. Listen to the preacher now. I'm getting closer to the punch. God is getting ready to finish up his work and he's depending upon young people to lead the charge of the gospel. Joel declares that while the old men will be dreaming dreams, simply reminiscing on the good old days, the young men and women will be receiving visions. Solomon then was spot on when he says in Proverbs 28 and verse 9, where there is no vision, the people perish. So if the young people are the one with the vision and without vision the people perish. It means that without young people in the church, the church is on its way to destruction. Ah, the youth then are not the future of the church. They are the church. They are not waiting in line to be let into the mission through the doors of bureaucracy. They are all in, in spirit and prepared for service. For this is my church, they say, and my mission. Hallelujah. Oh, let me bring it a little closer home. Helen G. White was born in 1827, Sister Carnet. Thus, she was only 17 when she and others pioneered what established her, what I mean, what led to the establishment of the Seventh day Adventist Church. She was still in cornerstone class, but she was in spirit and prepared for service. She was all in, for she said, This is my church. And my mission, Stuart Tyner, in his book, The ABZ of Adventist Youth Ministry, understands the essence of youth always being at the forefront of revolutionary changes in God's work. He says many early Seventh-day Adventist leaders were teenagers just like the kids in your group. Students, committed Christians with a consuming vision eager to serve, ready to go wherever God led them, willing to devote their lives to a well-defined mission. That is why my brothers and sisters, John Lowborough was 16 in 1848 when he started preaching. And it was before the time when, t when, when, when ministers received regular salaries passed the ball. So John worked during the week at whatever job he could find and then preached his heart out on the weekend. Annie and Uriah Smith, you know the name Uriah Smith, sister and brother became seven day Adventist Christians uh, while they were still teenagers uh, and he turned out to be a noted poet uh, and in writer Uriah started editing church publications uh, in 1853 uh, he was just 21 uh, I take it further John Andrews was already a part of the picture when he was 15 uh, he began a career as a minister when he was just 21 uh, and he passed along uh, his youthful enthusiasm to the church uh, and he was a single parent and he had two children but he was all in when he left the US in 1874 and became the church's first missionary Luther Warren where are my Adventist youth in the building today was only 14 in 1879 when he and a 17 year old friend of his Harry Fenner he wasn't following Harry Potter but he was following Harry Fenner decided the church needed an organ organization to encourage and support the youth. So they called their new group a Young People's Society. Within 10 years, the church structure was beginning to follow their lead. And in 1889, the Ohio Conference became the first to form a conference-wide youth organization. It was known as Christian Volunteers. And in 1907, the General Conference Youth Department was formally organized Organized and underwent several transition. Remember, young people of East Jamaica Conference, God doesn't ask how old we are, whether we are male or female, how well we've done in school, or how is life at home. He just tells us how he loves and cares for us, and how eager he is for us to join his team in telling the good news of the 
gospel of his grace to others. I said the church was started by a young savior. He was in the youth department. Jesus not all like the picture them that I have seen. Jesus was a young man and he was a faithful one. The church was established with a youthful bunch of believers called the apostles and the remnant church was rediscovered by a vibrant group of young men and women all under the age of 30. Oh, the three angels message is the end time message that Joel's prophecy is preparing the people of God for. As God is getting ready to take the gospel to the crevices and the corner, Sister Keisha, the devil thought God had a knockdown when the churches had a lockdown. But then came EJC Church Online. Then came NJC Church Online. Then was strengthened the West Jamaica Conference, Central Jamaica Conference, and the Northeast Jamaica Conference. Because my God is so large and in charge that even the devil has to contribute to his mission. Now I can preach to people at VH Percy, and they are tuning in from London, tuning in from the United States, tuning in from the Caribbean, uh, tuning in from Portland, uh, tuning in from Africa, uh, because I'm all in uh, and ready for service. Uh, now understand that there is a connection uh, between the use of technology and the three angels' messages. Uh, so the angels fly across the sky. Uh, that is swiftness. Uh, it is the quickness with which uh, you are able to press a button and connect to the stream. You never heard the preacher. The Bible says that they what, flew across the midst of heaven, so that is also conspicuous. It's talking about the ability to see on the screen. The Bible says, saying with a loud voice, it talks about the ability to adjust the audio to your suit. The Bible says, in every king to every kindred and tongue, every language, it speaks about the ability of God closed caption software to listen to an English preacher and watch it interpreted in Spanish so that you don't have to hear the preacher say, hasta la vista, como estas esta mariana iglesia no, the software can do all of that, so when God talks about the angels of revelation his final warning messages to the world before the final judgment that will destroy the wicked and bring restoration to the righteous Joel says, it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and when the sons and daughters begin to prophesy and the old men begin to see vision you are going to fly who are those angels they are not merely old people with all respect they are young angels with strong wings all angels can't fly because some of them have arthritis all angels can't fly because some are incapacitated by all sorts of maladies all angels can't fly. For Solomon says that they are afraid of height. All angels can't fly because they have poor vision. They will crash. All angels can't fly because they have to stay in bed. All angels can't fly because they are weak and can't angle the rigors anymore. That is why when John wrote he said I write unto you fathers all angels because you have known him who is from the beginning. Go and hold on to Jesus. But I have written unto you young men, young angels because you are strong and the word of God abides with you so I came to tell somebody here that when you have the word as a young angel you overcome the wicked one, it becomes the purpose of the older members then to solidify the youth in the true foundation of Jesus Christ and the sure foundation of his words they must embrace, encourage and empower the youth to carry the gospel to every crevice and corner of the world. For like angels across the sky, the angels that are youth are so fly. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm so fly. And so we have the technology and we ain't using it. Right now, for example, when you look at the post on the conference site, you see one little 30 like and one little 2 share. But every prank video, depending on your timeline, every mix of steel they're in your WhatsApp. Every anti done alive. You cock up in a city, you watch it. But when it is time for the angels to fly, you are acting it like it is time for the angels to die. 
fall on the Instagram and the Facebook of EJC right now. Look for the thumbnail that was posted and follow it. Touch the like button and react to it and share it and learn to make the message of the gospel viral. So let me tell you something. We've come to live in a time, I'm touching down, that young people don't use their devices to spread the truth, but devices. Give me a moment. Huh. I say I'm under the influence. I said we've come to a time where young people don't use their devices to spread the truth. But devices. They can spend time watching a two-hour movie. Whether in a sovereign or watch Barbie, you act like Christmas puss. And Barbie won for nearly two hours long. And you're still in a theater and move strong. But as soon as pastor pass half an hour, your face, your face long. I'm going to preach in East Jamaica conference today. Here. If you can give Bobby two hours, uh, you can give the servant of the Lord an hour. Am I talking truth in this place? Uh, when it's time to come to church, uh, when you are not in spirit and prepared for service, uh, you can be early for work, uh, early for airport, uh, early for U.S. Embassy like uh, you have the key for Papine. Uh, but when it's time for Sabbath school, uh, you're late. Uh, when it is time for night meeting, uh, you're absent. Uh, when it is time for AY, uh, you're late. Uh, but when you are in the spirit, and you are ready for service you don't give God half heart you are all in for this is my church and my mission and so brothers and sisters because young people are the most of fear with the use of technology God is depending upon the youth to wager their ability to navigate these software and social media platforms forms uh, to spread the message on uh, so when there's a church flyer uh, put it on your timeline uh, when there's a live stream uh, put it on your status uh, send it in the groups uh, instead of using social media to show that we are all in uh, we use it to show that we are all out out in the parties, out in the fashion, out in the swimwear, out in the hairstyles, out in the world, out with the sinners, and out of touch with God's mission. You have my brothers and sisters, someone in the church, but the church is not in them. You are followers, but you don't invite them to follow Jesus. But I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jews first. And to everyone who believes, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm so fly. Come on, I never heard you say, neighbor, I'm so fly. I am prepared, so I am ready. I'm ready to take up the church office. I'm ready to sing on the mass choir. I'm ready to preach in Constant Spring. I'm ready to teach in Moran Bay. I'm ready to do outreach in Golden Spring. I said that I'm ready. I may have a few kings to iron out, but but I'm ready. I may not be perfect, but I'm ready. For I don't want to live no more in sin. It is a time for restoration and judgment. So the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I am all in. I am in spirit. I'm prepared for service. Don't try to stop me. For the Holy Ghost power has brought me under the influence. I'm not drinking stone ginger wine. But I'm under the influence. I'm not drinking rum and Pepsi. But I'm under the influence. I'm not drinking brandy and water. But I'm under the influence. I'm not drinking Hennessy. I'm not drinking Jack Daniels. I am not drinking Appleton. But I'm under that the influence. For when you're under the influence of being a man, you drink rum and Red Bull. When you're under the influence of Bunty Killer, you cross angry. And miserable when you're under the influence of mackerel, you take with people, man. When you're 
under the influence uh, of popularity uh, your post paid press uh, leg and tie uh, like you are kfc uh, when you're under the influence uh, of valiant uh, you don't don't spot because uh, you're not on the subject uh, when you're under the influence uh, of secular music uh, you become a party goer uh, when you're under the influence uh, of gunmen uh, you become a gangster uh, when you're under the influence uh, of youtube influencers uh, you become a prankster but when i'm under the influence of the holy ghost i'm going to preach it until i reach it because i'm all in i'm in spirit and ready and prepared for service i said that i am i'm under the influence touch your neighbor and say i'm under the influence come on somebody say i'm under the influence I'm under the influence. For I know who I am. I know whose I am. And I know why I am. I am a bound of day child of God. He never purchased me on the black market. But he got the, uh, the, the original copy of Calvary. And because he paid the price for my soul. Lord, I'm ready for service. The song says we have heard thy call. Lord Jesus. And our hearts respond with joy. We will pledge thee our allegiance for thy cause or all employers. Say it with me, missionary volunteers. The youth of the world for the man of Galilee. The youth of the world from all sin and care set free. Every talent pledged in service. No one through eternity. I said the youth of the world for the man of Galilee. I'm so fly. I'm all in. For this is my church and my mission. I am under. The influence. Touch your neighbor and say under the influence. Somebody shout, come on, under the influence. Touch your sister and say, I'm under the influence. Today I want to make a call. This is where I close the book. Come for it, minister. Because if you don't come, we we'll preach again. Come for it, minister. Let me follow Jesus. Fasten your eyes on me. Notice I closed the book. And I gave it to the minister. So I'm ready to close. Lord of mercy, I have to come clear. Put the link in the chat. Pastor Walker, it just came to me. Let me take a sit down. Jesus was preparing to pour the Holy Spirit, Pastor Dane, upon the youth of the church so that they could be under the influence to carry out the work of the gospel utilizing the technology. But Satan boxed it out of our hands and turn some young people into influencers. And instead of bringing the truth to YouTube, then bring prank videos. Instead of teaching people to be clothed in the righteousness of Jesus, you show them how you clothed come at church. Because you're so hot and full of yourself, you don't even have space for Jesus. And to show how backward we are. Nobody takes portraits like this anymore because you're not going to get enough likes. So everybody has to show a bumper. But Paul says, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press forward to the high calling that is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. I don't allow pranksters to dictate my timeline or how I live my life because I'm under the influence of the Holy Spirit. God is not calling you to be, calling you to be YouTube pranksters and, and, and lifestyle high. My name is Jeremy Johnson. I'm going to turn on the switch now. <laughs> Click. Wow, look at the light. Like seriously. We have made a mockery of the resource of technology that God has vested the, the knowledge of in our youth to finish the gospel. Right now, for those of you who are here, as soon done, go on the Instagram or the Facebook of EJC. And they posted the thumbnail for today. Like it. Let me show you how easy it is for us to make the church message viral. But we don't follow that. Conference post something 30 likes. But as soon as I see one, one, one little mix up video, millions of likes. And are you seeing one? I say no, amen. Are you seeing one? I like the worldly things then. A 
anything I say at this stage, you have to pardon me because I'm inebriated by the Spirit of God. I say I'm under the influence. Go to EJC Instagram right now if you're there on IG and press the like button. Jump over there right now to Facebook and press the, the love button and the like we want for it is love. And notice I already commented, right? I'm all in. And look how easy things can trend. Because according to these algorithms they're using so, on social media and YouTube, etc., the more people interact with the thing is the more they trend it. And thus others are able to find it. You are in for the influencers of those spreading lies. It was a prank. <laughs> but when the truth of God's love is being spread, where is your thumbs up? Where is your share? Where is your like? You know, but that is of the past. We're going to fix it today. Somebody say fix it. Somebody say fix it. I'm under the influence. Today I want to call somebody. You are here this afternoon. And you have not yet accepted Jesus as your Lord. That means you are not being influenced by the Spirit of God. For Jesus says, if any man has not the Spirit of Christ, is none of his. So now hear all your trash and look good like Christmas puts a church today. You're going to burn because you don't have any Jesus. But that can change for you now. Like it was changed for Aaron this morning. And if you want to be baptized so that you can come under the influence of the Spirit of God, come to the front. I am not calling you for prayer at this time. If you want to be baptized so that you can come under the influence of the Spirit of God and be saved, come to the altar. For Joel says, it shall come to pass, somebody praise the Lord, that all those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Look how easily it reached a 13 already from one a while ago. Some others need to follow. You never brought any clothes. You don't have any garments. Don't worry yourself. We have change of garments and gowns for you. You have been under Satan for too long. But this afternoon I decree and declare upon the authority of the word of God. You're no longer a slave to sin. You are a child of God. Who else will come and stand with this young man? Will you come under the influence of the Holy Spirit? You are a backslider young woman. A backslider young man. You've been away from church for too long. It's time for you to return to the Lord. Maybe you have never made a surrender before. But you want to say, Pastor JJ, I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain. And I'm doing my best to make it in. I'm coming up. Back me tongue. Back me up now, praise team. Whoa. On the rough side. Praise the Lord, sister. Off the mountain. And I must come for your baptism. Hey, his wonderful head. Hey, I'm coming up. Coming up now. On the rough side. Of the mountain. Of the mountain. Come on, somebody. I'm doing my best to make it in. Before you go further. Somebody else today needs to come and get baptized. We are getting ready to do the vows. You have been away from Jesus for too long. But you want to come back under the influence. You don't want to be left out. Because you are so fly. God doesn't want you to die. Come and show God today that you are all in. And this is my church and mission. So I'm coming up. This is the last time. Wonderful hand, I'm coming up on the rough side. Is there one more? Is there one more? This is it. Come on, everybody. Come on. I'm doing my best to me. Somebody shout the name above every other name. Somebody shout the name above every other name. Is he worthy to be 
praise. Come on and shout the highest praise. For I'm under. The influence. Raise your hand if you came up for baptism. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Raise your hand if you came up for baptism. Amen. Is there one more? Come, Pastor Joel. You ready? Raise your hand if you came for baptism. Step up in the life. Come right up here. Amen. You're under the influence. Raise your hand if you want to be baptized. Come right up here. Amen. Come right up here. Amen. Lunch can pass. I have had food to eat of which you know nothing about. Amen. Praise the Lord. Under the influence. Oh, Pastor Bar is conferring with them at the side. Give them a moment because the water are troubled. Is there another who wants to come to Jesus today? For until you've made the Lord my God, your God, you're under bad influence. Can I tell you a story? And this will end the appeal. The story is told of a man who bought his daughter a parrot. Let's call the parrot Polly. And every day, Polly enjoyed life to the maximum. It had everything to its liking and luxury. But Polly always looked outside at the crows and felt as if it was missing out on life. It felt as if it was locked up and wanted a little freedom to enjoy itself. So one day, the man having a cornfield purchased a shotgun to scare the crows every now and then for they were destroying his crop. And the day that he went out to test the gun was the day that Polly decided to escape and go join the crows. Because Polly allowed popularity to trump its spirituality. So when Polly went out, because Polly wasn't all in, he only wanted to fit in. So when the birds went up, Polly went up. When the birds went down, Polly went down. When they went across, they, he went across. And when it was lunchtime, Pastor Francis, they went into the cornfield and Polly went. When the father saw the birds, bam, shot fire. When he went to investigate, everything scattered, but one that fell dead. When he looked, it was Polly the parrot. When he took home the dead bird, with sadness on his face, his daughter leaped from the upstairs crying, Daddy! Daddy! Who killed my Polly? Who killed my Polly? The daddy said, Darling, it's not so much about who killed your Polly, but what killed your Polly. What killed Polly, Daddy? Bad company, sweetheart. Polly died because of bad company. Birds of a feather do not only flock together. Sometimes they get shot together. Literally and figuratively. That's why you must follow the birds who are flying in the right direction. Come and join the angels of God who are so fly. You are here online. You need to repent and turn over your life to Jesus. Don't hide behind the camera. Click on that link. Take off that phone number and reach out to the EJC for somebody to reach out to you so that it can be made official. 30 seconds to go. Is there one more today who wants to come under the influence of the Holy Spirit? You are not a child of God. You've been struggling for many years, but today is your deliverance. Today is your breakthrough. You might feel as if you are about to break down, but that's from the devil. You are about to break through. God wants to take you to another level. Is there one more who wants to come under the influence of the Holy Spirit? I'm just waiting for the queue from the side for the others to come and join. Is there one more? 15 seconds to go. Whose influence do you want to be under? The influence of Satan that leads to death? Or the influence of Jesus Christ that leads to life? Is there one more? Is there one more? Don't even walk if you're coming. Run. Run. Run like a bus you catch. Run. This is the number seven bus. It's a perfect bus. And it's on its way to heaven. Is there one more? Are we getting some from the side, Pastor White? Send them. Come as soon as they're here, Pastor. We're ready for you. Now that I have finished that first call, you are a young man or a young woman within the age of youth. And you have decided in your heart today that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're no longer gonna, you're no longer gonna hold back on God. You're going to be all in because you know that this is your church and your mission. If that is you, rise to your feet. Praise the Lord. All those in the youth group, come on, rise to your feet. If you're online, type Y for youth, and we know that that is your determination as well. Come on, somebody, encourage the young people. Look at them. 
That's where the vision is coming from. Look at them. They are the ones that God is going to pour his spirit upon to finish the work. A young savior died for the sins of old men. Like Jeremy and Johnson and others. A young team started the apostolic church. A young team rediscovered the remnant church. And a young team will be used by the spirit of God. To finish the work of the gospel. Those older folks who are dreaming dreams. But at least you know him who is from the beginning. Just stand and hug a young person next to you. And affirm them. And if none of the side of you, find one and affirm them. Praise the name of the Lord. Come praise team, affirm each other. You're young too. Find them. Find them. Find them. Affirm them. As soon as those are here, Pastor, it's your time. Somebody else can come under the influence, Pastor Lewis, if they so desire. While we wait for the others to come and join our brother. What is your name? Shaheem Cole. Huh? Shaheem Cole. Shaheem? Shaheem. Praise the Lord. Shaheem has come to Elohim. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, everybody. Put your hands together and, and encourage our young people. Oh, my God. Young man, I call upon you. What a handshake. Because you are strong and the word of God abides with you. And you know why you are here? Because you have overcome the wicked one. You are under the influence of the Holy Spirit. What is your name? Brian Charles Largi. Gardener, welcome to the Largi, Largi, Largi. Welcome to the fold of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lady in red is about to be covered in, in the blood of the Lamb. Come on, somebody. Somebody say hallelujah. Covered under the blood. She's under the influence. What is your name? Shelly Ann Smith. Huh? Shelly Ann Smith. Welcome home, Shelly. Praise the name of the Lord. What is your name, young man? Shamari Simpson. Shamar, welcome home, Shamar. You are standing here because you have overcome the wicked one. You are showing the world that you are under the influence Amen. of the Holy Spirit. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Uh, listen, I am not holding out your lunchtime. But there is one more person who needs to be up here to make it five. And you are holding out on God. You need to run. Even as Pastor John comes to do the vows, you need to run. Run! And come under the influence. Somebody online needs to run. Click that line, that link, and come under the influence. There is a fifth person here today. And God is calling you a last time. You've been stubborn. You don't, you, I don't know your name. I don't know your face, but you know yourself. Come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Or come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. There's a fifth one here today. And it's not Aaron from morning. It's a fresh one. Come. 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 Oh, let me pray a short prayer. Everlasting Father, we thank you even now for those that you are bringing under the influence of your spirit. Thank you for these four who stand. And in advance, the others who will come.